Tonight we present the first of two films directed by David Cronenberg. A Canadian biochemistry student who switched to English language and literature, Cronenberg can legitimately be described as the most original director currently working on the North American continent. His films, which are always shot in Canada, Canadian cities doubling for New York or Marrakesh, fall generally within the horror genre. They deal with secret scientific experiments gone wrong, cannibalism, sexual mutation, and epidemic disease. Depending on your point of view, Cronenberg is either a maker of sick exploitation movies or an ascetic prophet of the modern age. Shivers, made in 1975, was his first feature. It dealt with a hotel suddenly ravaged by a sexual virus which drove all the guests insane. Scanners deals in exploding heads and mind control. Rabid, the second film in our double bill tonight, is the story of a woman who mutates into an erotomaniac cannibal. The Dead Zone deals with a man whose precognitive gifts lead him into madness and political assassination. And The Fly is about a man who turns into a giant fly. Tonight's tale is that of Beverly and Elliot Mantle, twin gynecologists from Toronto, whose perverse relationship with their patients and each other leads them into familiarly nightmarish Cronenberg territory. Compared to the maestro's other films, Dead Ringers is remarkably unbloodthirsty. It's based on a book called Twins by Barry Wood and Jack Geesland, and is apparently a true story. Not that it matters. I doubt that the original tale of the mantles was any more like Dead Ringers than Cronenberg's Naked Lunch was like the William Burroughs book. Cronenberg films are always first and foremost Cronenberg films. The only compromise to which Dead Ringers had to submit was a title change, the word twins having been appropriated by an Arnold Schwarzenegger film. In some ways, Dead Ringers is unique, however. It's the first Cronenberg film which features really good acting. Now, I know there are those who will insist that James Woods was good in Videodrome or Christopher Walken excellent in The Dead Zone. But to my taste, the acting in the great man's films has always been deliriously wooden. Dead Ringers, on the other hand, has a genuinely fine performance by Jeremy Irons, who plays the twin gynecological brothers. It's photographically remarkable, too, laid down on film via a process called motion control, whereby the camera's moves can be duplicated via computer animation, thus enabling Mr. Irons to play one brother and get changed, go back and play the other brother, while the camera tracks ahead of them round corners and through doors. Now, in the old days of film about twin brothers, you may recall the camera had to remain in one position and there was always a blue line running down the middle of the screen. The excellent director of photography was Peter Suchitsky. Jeremy Irons is reported to have said that the way he differentiated between his two roles was by always having one brother on the ball of his feet, the other on his heels. Can it be true? Or is there more to his extraordinary performance? Judge for yourself as you relax, kick back, and enjoy Dead Ringers. Did you like that? Now Movie Drome proudly presents one of the finest cult films of all time, Rabid, by David Cronenberg. Cronenberg is, as we have said, the director of The Fly remake and Shivers and The Naked Lunch, Scanners and The Dead Zone, a venerable roster of cult horror movies surpassed by no other practitioner of the genre. Not Wes Craven, not Todd Browning, not Mario Bava, not Dario Argento, not John Carpenter, not even the ineffable James Whale made as many genuinely weird and unsettling horror films. Of the above mentioned, only Argento has as thoroughly thought out a worldview and consistent take on vicious horror lurking behind the most mundane things. Yet Argento is preoccupied by a rather infantile misogyny of the De Palma brand, and like De Palma makes ultimately boring films. Cronenberg, on the other hand, transcends misogyny and even misanthropy, he stands like Philant in Moliere's play, aside from things, disgusted by them, yet amused, and physically and fiscally involved as well, the ultimate celluloid cynic. Cronenberg's movies portray a sense of physical horror at human sexuality unmatched in any other charted area of cinema. In addition, his films are preoccupied with the mechanics of surgery and the transmission of disease-bearing viruses. Many of the early ones, including Rabid, bear a considerable debt to Night of the Living Dead. Cronenberg is one of the only English-speaking directors allowed the luxury of an unhappy ending.
Could the unspoken rumor that Cronenberg is actually a renegade U.S. Army colonel from Fort Detrick Biological Weapons Station, Maryland, attempting to blow the whistle on secret releases of airborne viral toxins in the New York subway system really be true? No, it could not. Cronenberg is, as we have said, a Canadian. I had the pleasure of reading one of his scripts in the assistant to the producer's office and it was a highly pleasurable experience because there were no embarrassing and elementary mistakes of spelling and grammar such as you normally find in screenplays and director's scripts. In fact, there were no mistakes at all. I mean, this guy is not only a great filmmaker, he's literate. Rabbit is, in my opinion, Cronenberg's best. It was made in 1976 and is the story of one Rose, played by Marilyn Chambers, whose unfortunate involvement in a motorbike accident leads to bizarre and disastrous results. Marilyn Chambers, you may recall, as a child was the Miss Purity soap advertising symbol all across the USA and in adulthood became a major porno star. Combining the twin American obsessions of cleanliness and sex, Miss Chambers is the quintessential Cronenberg actor. Next on Movie Drome, Life in and out of the saddle. Steve McQueen and Ida Lupino in Sam Peckinpah's Junior Bonner.